Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Aiden and welcome back to another video here on BOZ Gaming. So yesterday I was going through all the videos currently on this channel when I realized that we literally only have three zombies videos. Which is retarded to me mainly because the main things me and Miguel play at this point is zombies. So I've decided to change that. Ladies and gentlemen, today I'm making channel history with all the zombies maps ranked from worst to best. But before we get into this video though, see there's this thing called an opinion. Yeah, everyone in the world has it. So if you don't 100% agree with this list, don't go and write a 7 paragraph essay about me in the comments. Because I honestly don't want to see that shit. That being said, let's start off the list with my boy Transit. Yeah, everyone in the community knows why. I'm not even going to go and explain that. It's it, it's just a crap map, guys. J just face it. It's terrible. <laughs> Coming in at our number 20th spot is Die Rise. Now, in my opinion, this map is either a hit or a miss. You either love this map or you don't. And I'd say that 90% of the community hates this map. For the most part, this map is pretty dark and gloomy, which I don't personally enjoy. Not when you're out on the rooftops, though, because it's actually nice and bright up there. But for the most part, it's dark and gloomy. Not to mention, you'll be waiting for that one elevator to give you that one perk that'll allow you to make it to those high rounds that you want to make it to. Jug. And the fall damage just adds to that crap factor, as well as the fact that they teased PhD, which is the one freaking perk that would be so useful for this kind of map. Like, really, Troll Arc, why? Why? Why, Troll Arc? Why are you gonna be like this? What a backstory of me and this map. This was my first DLC I ever bought for a COD game. On to the next one, though. We have. Nuketown. Now this is where I start losing some people because a lot of people like Nuketown and I do too. Nuketown is a great map and it's super fun. But there are issues like never getting Jug to around 25. Which triggers me. Uh, and also the fact that we have Nuketown in all the games. Okay, every single game. Except for World at War. Like, like really. That's, that's too much. Too much, guys. No. <laughs> On to the 18th spot, we have knocked around Toten. Now, I know this is the map that started it all, but honestly, this map, if you look at it, is not as good as Seder, Ice, and Draka or Origins. After playing this map once, I personally just get bored and don't want to play it again. Coming in here at 17 is Varuk, the first Zombies DLC ever. It's simply knocked around Toten, but a little bit better. Basically, this map is knocked, but with electric traps, perks, and a movable box. Yeah. Here at the number 16 spot, we have my favorite World at War map, Shinonuma. There's not much to say about it because it's similar to the previous World at War maps earlier up on this list. This map added in the first Wonder Weapon ever seen at Zombies, the Wonder Wolf, as well as the first ever bosses or boss rounds ever, the Hellhounds. This map also introduced the main characters that we've grown to love today. I personally feel like it was cool to see them get away from the Nazi feelings that the other maps have and move on to something different, hence the Japanese swamp. Well, the Numero Quince is 5. Now, this is a cool setting for a map, the Pentagon. Not to mention that you can play as the best president ever, JFK. Out of all the Black Ops 1 maps, 5 is probably my least favorite, but it is definitely one of the coolest maps of all time. Seriously. This map is also really difficult with all the tight spaces you have to maneuver around, which was probably why I didn't play this map as much. But it also introduced the amazing Pentagon Thief and the Bonfire Sale, as well as some not-so-good things, like the Winter's Howl. Overall, cool map deserves the number 15 spot. Here at the number 14 spot, we definitely have the least favorite map in Black Ops 3, Zetsubo. Glitches, Thrashers, Copycat, Wonder Weapons, what's not to hate? I know I should stop ranting because this map is technically better than the previously discussed maps, but it's Setsubo. Yep, definitely deserves this spot. Sorry, H2 Maze. Thirteen. 100% buried. This map fits in with the transit storyline, obviously, but I definitely think it's the better one out of the three. There's just so much more you could do on this map. So much more perks, less fall damage. I honestly would have ranked it higher if it wasn't so easy. 
but still, it's overall just a fun map to play. I enjoy playing it with Miguel. Here at the number 12 spot, we have Black Ops 3's concluding map, Revelations. This map was fun for about a month in my opinion, but then I just got tired of playing it because of how easy it was. Seriously, someone should not be able to get to round 100 in less than 2 hours. Not to mention the fact that this easter egg was random and for the longest time, we the community believed in this thing called a super easter egg, which never even turned up. Zombie Chronicles made up for its disappointment though. Here at the number 11 spot, we have Kino de Toten. Now can we just say that the atmosphere for this map is freaking amazing. That abandoned theater is, well, it's just awesome. The Nazi flags everywhere just adds to that vibe. Fun fact about this map, this was the first map I ever played, and that just makes me love it even more. On to the top 10 ladies and gentlemen, shango -A. a ton of people hate this map, but not me. This was the last DLC I bought for Black Ops 1, and man I wish I bought it way sooner. This map is just sexy. The Wonder Weapon as well, just- Ah! Mmm, it's- it's so good. The monkeys were annoying at first, but once you got good at using them, you can manipulate them into giving you all the perks in the game. My personal highest round for this map is 72, and man, am I proud of it. Here at number 9, we have Ascension. Now, I just freaking love this map. It introduced PSD and Stamina up, which were just amazing. The Sickle, by far, is the coolest melee ever. And the monkeys you could just use to get free perks. It's just a freaking amazing map, guys. I, I absolutely adore it. Here at numero 8, we have my boy Moon. This is another hit or miss map, and I just love this map. The astronaut was a good boss zombie in my opinion, though he was annoying, and the anti-gravity was just so nice. Not to mention the easter egg. It just blew my mind. Number 7, Call of the Dead. I just love this map. I don't really even need to talk about it. Yeah, it's, it's just Call of the Dead. Coming in at the number 6 spot, we have Duris. What an amazing map. The Catwalk, Pack Punch, Hellhounds, Perks, and Power. This map just did everything right. I remember specifically staying up real late playing this map with my friends in their basement while we were younger, trying to get to high rounds. Man, those were some of my favorite memories playing zombies. Now we've made it to the top 5, and many will be shocked by my decision for this spot. Shadows of Evil. Many hate this map due to its complexity. In fact, it's about as tedious as Zetsubo, but I freaking love this map. This map is so good. It added in so many new things that we've never heard about in zombies. It added in the best Wonder Woman ever, the Apothecan Servant. The funny thing is that I was literally playing this map this morning. I guess I just love this map. Here at the number 4 spot, we have Gorad Kovi, a map based on Nikolai is bound to be good, and this map just was. Plus, everything was based around z dragons as well, which is just amazing. Though I don't play this map often, I do seem to love it when I do play it. Here at the number 3 spot, ladies and gentlemen, we have Mob of the Dead. I think it's safe to say that Black Ops 2 had debatably the best maps of all time and the worst. And Mob of the Dead is one of the best. This map is just plain epic. It's so unique. First, the afterlife mode, no quick revive anymore because you can just revive yourself. Second, the plane, you have to build something to get to the pack punch. And let's just talk about how the pack a punch was on the Golden, Bur Golden Gate Bridge. That's awesome. Third, the Hell's Retriever, definitely the coolest lethal ever. Fourth, the Blunder Gat and the Acid Gat, amazing. The list just never ends. One of the coolest atmospheres for a zombies map of all time, as well. And the crew that you played as were just, I'm in awe, dude. They're so good. Amazing map, definitely deserves third place. Here at the number 2 spot, we have Origins. Many people may be surprised by this choice because not too long ago, I said that this was my favorite map. But times changed, guys. This map did everything right. It just did the staffs, the easter egg, the crew, the area that you played in, 
the color scheme of this map, I do love it. And I do explain why I love it in another video on my channel, which will probably eventually be uploaded to this channel. Uh, eventually. But see, there's just one map that's better than this. And here at number one, guys. Taking on the name as the best zombies map ever to be created, we have... Dryson Jock. I can't get enough of this map. I'm just gonna say that right now. This map is just amazing. The bows, the easter egg, the atmosphere, the crew, the storyline aspects, the traps, the bosses. Everything was great on this map. This map also blew up my main channel. And this map was the first map that I ever completed an easter egg on. It has a special point in my heart. I just love it. I just do. Well, guys, that is going to be the video. Hope you enjoyed. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And comment down below stating your favorite map. That being said, I'll see you in the next video or live stream. Peace out.